Have you ever been intrigued by perspective and how artists and designers use perspective to create this idea of illusion of depth in their work? I know that for some beginners and for some people who are very experienced, perspective can be quite intimidating. And so in this series, it's a little mini series, I am going to be teaching you how to use one, two and three point perspective in your drawing so that you can learn the skills and the techniques to enable you to bring that element of sophistication and depth in your work. And I really hope you're going to enjoy it because it's one of the things where I am a teaching that people do feel a little bit scared about because it looks complicated. And in some aspects, it is quite complicated. But I'm going to show you step by step how to do it. My name is Kate Field. I'm an artist and teacher. I've been a teacher for a very long time. And my mission, if you like, <laughs> is to inspire people like you to get your pencils out, get out your paints and start creating. Are you ready? Let's go. So what you're going to need is a ruler. Now I've got a 45 centimetre ruler. Uh, that's an 18 inch ruler. Uh, but if you've just got a um, 12 inch, 30 centimetre ruler, that's fine. And you're going to need a pencil. And that's all we're going to use for this first part of working on how to create one point perspective in your drawings. So this is called linear perspective. So they are governed by mathematical laws and these were discovered by Greeks and Romans, um, you know, developed by the Romans. But then it's one of those things that were just lost in the Dark Ages and then discovered again during the Renaissance. Now, Filippo Brunelleschi, who was an Italian architect working in the 15th century, famous for the design of the Dome of Florence Cathedral, he is credited with having the first known drawing of perspective in, um, in a painting. Um, whether that's, that's true or not, is not, we're not quite sure. But in the Renaissance, there was an explosion of artists using this idea of one point and two point perspective to create depth and drama in their paintings and it makes them look so much more realistic than the paintings that had been painted 100, 200, 300 years before and this is why it's just so exciting. Now when we're looking at the work of other artists like Carlo Crivelli or Piero della Francesca we can see this idea of depth and illusion. And this is perspective. And it can look really quite complicated. But the starting points are really very basic. And that is what we're going to do in this first part of a series of drawing tutorials on how to use one, two and three point perspective in your drawings. Now, there are three key terms that I'm going to explain to you. First are the orthogonals. orthogonals. Second is the vanishing point. And the third is the horizon line. Sometimes that's called the eye level. And these three terms I'm going to go through and explain to you so you will be very, very familiar with them. Now I'm going to start with the horizon line. Now I'm using um, a large just sheet of paper. It's A3 size or two sides of letter. And this is where having the longer ruler is handy. Or you could just have a piece of wood, actually, because you don't need to measure it particularly at this point. And what we're going to do is we're going to put the horizon line about two thirds of the way down. 
and the line needs to be parallel with the edge of the paper otherwise everything will look a bit squiffy so i'm going to put in my first line now i'm going to be using my marker pen and colors so that you can see what i'm doing much more clearly you're going to use a pencil because you're going to be rubbing out some of the lines so that is our first our first line where we have got our horizon and this is really important because this is where our vanishing point is going to be so we have got our horizon line and now i am going to put in my vanishing point and your vanishing point is always going to be on your horizon line and i'm going to put in the vanishing point there you can put a tiny little dot you can hardly see i'm going to put a big cross so that you can see it <laughs> okay we're going to start by creating a square and we're going to see what happens to that square when we use our vanishing points so i'm going to start off with my ruler parallel to the sides of the paper so it's a, it's um, perpendicular to the horizon line somewhere here i'm going to just plonk it in the middle actually and i'm going to do it as five centimeters so a couple of inches i'm just going to draw a square now i am using a ruler you could do freehand and some of the ones i'm going to do later are going to be freehand but for this exercise i just want to show you what happens and how it all comes together now i'm now going to use my red pencil so that you can see this much more clearly and we're looking at the points of my square and we're going to join that point to the vanishing point of that one and that one now for this exercise i'm assuming that this cube is going to be turned into a cube in a moment <laughs> it's going to be um solid okay now the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to put in another line again it's going to be parallel to the sides of the paper so this isn't going to be a perfect cube because for the for this exercise it doesn't need to be this line is parallel to the horizon line and that is going to be our first cube now i'm going to go over that with blue so you can see where that line is there with my little cube like that and like that let's just pop those in there so here we have our first solid cube now these lines here let's just do a little here are our orthogonals oh these lines here in reality if this was a real cube they would be in, they would be parallel with each other they are not parallel when we are creating perspective so this is our first cube and what we could do is we could just sort of shade in just quite loosely these here So here we have our horizon line and this is a cube as if it's flying in the sky up in the air and i'm going to do another one i'm using the same vanishing point so this time i'm going to move the paper over a little bit and let's just do a let's just do it down here i'm going to do an inch square 
or it could be an oblong. We're just keeping keeping to very simple shapes at the moment. Go here. Keep your pencil sharp. It will make life a lot easier. We're going to put in our orthogonals from our corners. You can see those. That one. Here we go. That one. And that one. So we've got another cube flying in the air. Pop. Actually, we'd have this like a, a long oblong flying in the air. I'll just do these by hand so you can see that one there. And in your drawing, you can rub these red lines out, these orthogonals out. Okay, so you can see we've got two flying up in the air. I'm going to do one over this side. You can see what happens there. Let's do one freehand. I'm still going to keep to this idea of um, the rectangles and cubes. Let's just do that in blue. So you can see that. The orthogonals this time are going to come from these points. That there, there, and there. I'm just going to put that one parallel to that line and the horizon line. That one's got a bit Griffy, let's just put that one in there. We can see that that cuboid is floating up in the sky. Okay, so what about if it is actually on the horizon line? What happens then? And put our rectangle you see that one? You see that on the horizon line. And our orthogonal is going to be there. So it's going to cut through that other one, but that's okay. So it's going to go all the way down there. The other orthogonal is going to be actually on the horizon line. Let's put in that. We've got that one there actually on the horizon. What if it's below the horizon? What is that going to look like? Okay, let's just move that up. I'm going to do, I'm going to do another cuboid here. Okay, our orthogonals are going to be here, here, and here. Let's put that one that way, that way, and that one. And we have this one. There and there. Putting our shadows in this way, just so that you can see, see how that's appearing. So if something is below the horizon line, we can see the top of it. If something is above the horizon line, we can see the bottom of it. If it's on the horizon, we can't see either the top or the bottom. We can only see one side. Let's just put that down like that. Okay, so I hope you're getting an idea of what this sort of one point, I'm just gonna pop that up here. 
one point perspective looks like. But yeah, it's all, all fine just having our, our little squares. But how is this going to work in a drawing and what what can we do with it? And that's going to be the next stage. So in our next exercise, we are going to do a classic street scene. I've put in the horizon line. I've put it about two thirds of the way up the page. So um, higher than the previous one. And the first thing we're going to do is to going to put in the road. So actually, I'm going to put this in with the black pen so we can see. I want you to imagine that this is our street edge. So I'm just putting out those, those there. Again, when I'm working with a pen, you're working with a pencil. We're going to put in our first building. Now our buildings are going to be parallel to the edge of the page. This is really important. So I'm going to put in the line there. I'm going to join that line to the vanishing point. And I'm going to just going to put in that. Now you will rub out that line there because that is our first building. Let it come over this way. Put a line there and a line there. So this line, this is the edge of the building, so it's like we're looking at it. Pop that down there. And we've got our first building here. Nothing fancy, we're just putting in some buildings that have, they are, they're separated. Let's just put in another one here. We're now going to go off the page. Join that one to the vanishing point. There, you can see the vanishing point goes down to there. We put that there. Oh, let's just join that to the bottom, like this. So we imagine that the street goes down this way. That comes out as well. So does that. You'll rub those bits out. I'm going to do another building here. This one is going to join with this one. to that, as if these two buildings are joined together. And then I'm going to put an edge here. This. Down there. Now, this building here needs to have a side. So that needs to be put in there, otherwise it doesn't make any sense. I can imagine that this is a street going this way and I'm going to do some more of that in a moment. I'm going to work on this side. So let's put in our first line there. We'll join up with that. And we're going to put in our other line. Now this, I'm just going to put this line up here with a pencil. All of our buildings need to line up for it, for them all to make sense. So I'm just going to put this one. I'm going to imagine that these two buildings are the same height. So we've got this building here. I'm going to put another little building there. They're the same. Take out those. I'm going to put some shadows in so you can see things a bit more clearly. Let's put a parallel there. And that there. And just join that one up. So we've got this block. Imagine a um, a street block. Okay, let's just put in another one. Other building here. 
line that up with the vanishing point. Let's bring that down there. Take that line out. So we're beginning to have this idea of a street. Now let's make this a little bit more realistic. We're going to put in our pavement or our sidewalk. there so we've got these buildings that are right up against the edge of the sidewalk of the pavement i am going to imagine that this is a street do it with pen i think it's going to be easier for you to see if, if we've got pen so let's put in a door this way so we can see that our path is going to go down this way. And there's going to be a building next door to this one. But it's going to be shorter. Now you'll notice I'm not putting any roofs on. We're not, we're not putting roofs on at the moment. We're just keeping very square buildings. Let's put another door. Here. Now, let's put a door in this one. So we're going to pop in the first line of the door, the first vertical, and the top of the door has to match up with the vanishing point. There. Like that way. So just put in our door like that. And it means that all of the windows also need to match up with the vanishing point. So I'll show you this. Let's put in a window there and a window there and a window there. They're the edges of the windows. We need to match all of these up with the vanishing point as we go down the street. Like that. And that one. Okay. And then we're going to go parallel to the building put in the edge of our window so they can join up those ones like that so we have all of those windows going down towards the vanishing point so I'm hoping this is making sense. <laughs> don't worry if you're thinking, oh no, I don't know what's happening. It's all very confusing. Um, the more you do it, the better you get, like everything. So these are, these are the lines we need to take out. Let's do over this way. Let's put a door here, because this road's going down that way that way. So the windows here are all going to be facing this way. Like that. But the ones going this way, we need to follow the vanishing line. So how I'm going to do that, I'm just going to put in my vertical lines like that, take my vanishing point, like that, and then we can put them in. Let me just do that quite quickly so that you can see how this works. Uh, 
and then one in like that so lastly I'm going to do a door here and then I'll do a little bit more while you have a bit of a practice put in a vertical there so imagine that that's the door vanishing point that vertical and that is like a imagine that's a big could be like a big door can't it let's just pop that right in there <laughs> a few a few little knobs on it yes let's do some more windows, putting the verticals first, joining up with the vanishing point there and there. Let's put that one in. This line must be vertical, otherwise, it would just look wonky. Put that one in as well. Like that. And like that. Joining that one up there. So I hope you can kind of see how this is developing. So I put a little, I've decided to put a little bit of colour on this one. Now, our horizon line here is sometimes called an eye level. Now, if we look at this logically, where we've where I've put the doors is underneath the eye level. So it's like we're, we are looking down this street, um, both kind of going back along towards the vanishing point, but also we're looking down. Now, what happens if we move the eye level, the horizon? So this is the next one we're going to do. I've put in the horizon much lower down the page. So it's probably in the lower fifth of the page. And I'm going to put, I'm going to use pencil in this one. So I think you're beginning to get the idea. And I'm going to put the vanishing point here, which is about a third to the left and I'm going to put in my street we're doing a street scene again I'm going to put in my pavement road edges in this lower bit here and what I'm going to do is to show you what happens with extremes so I'm going to imagine that a building is going to be here. We're right up close to this building, to the edge of it. I'm going to put that line in there. This line vertical to the edge needs to join up with the vanishing point. I'm just going to put this line in quite lightly. I'm going to put that edge there goes right off the page but this is the edge of my building and the front of the building we're going to be looking at it head on so we've got big building there and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to rub out these lines which is what you're going to be doing as well. Those there. Now I'm going to put in my next building. The lines have to be parallel. So I'm going to put in a put in a building that is a bit taller, but it's further back. Let's see what happens. Putting the orthogonals now. Joining up with that. In another, just imagine this is a tall, thin building like this. Okay, 
way. And imagine that there's like a little alleyway between these two buildings. Okay, let's put that line across there, which means I need to take out this line and this one and take out those. Now, can you see what's happening with these two buildings? Now, I'm going to put this bit of red here just so that you can see it. This is the oh, first building here. And this one here is behind. You see that one there. Right, but just imagine that they're blocks. Oh, see that. We're, we're keeping to the idea of rectangles. Just keeping that idea. I'm going to do a building that's joined to this one, but is not as tall. So let's pop that one there. I've already got a line here, so I'll just use it. And that is our little building that is next to this one. But what if the building next to this one is taller? So let's take that line up there. Drop that line there. This is the shorter building, this one is taller behind it as we're going narrower and going down. So you can see what's what's happening as these buildings <laughs> start, start to grow. Um, this is what makes it all very, very exciting. Let's have some taller buildings over this side. Let's put in a line down here joined up that way and it's going to be quite extreme this building as if it's a very tall building like a modern city with the skyscrapers let's just put that one you see how that that is coming together. Let's have a building next to this one, joined to it, but shorter. That. Join up the orthogonal. Like that. So that's the building next to it. This building needs to have a side and a top. Let's take the top over that way. We're going to carry on. Let's do another one here. Really just want you to see how you can really get your imagination flowing with these. And don't worry about making mistakes. Yeah, you're going to make mistakes if you've never done this before. Yeah, you just, oh, it's inevitable. Let's put that line down there. I just see where, where that bit goes, because I'm thinking I want to create something a bit quirky. I might work on that one a bit later. Hang on, let's just do that one there. Now, can you see this looks really weird? What is happening with this, this little building here? Well, how about we let it jut out this way with another kind of alleyway? this and then we can really start to see that this building is going to be behind this one so we need to move move some of these around and <laughs> this is I love it this is where it becomes great fun let's just pop that one there and here so you know, take a step back 
from your work, see what happens. I'm going to take that line there. I love it. I love creating these street scenes, these fantasies. Um, and just then all creating a bit of a narrative around them. So we're getting a bit of a city cityscape. Now, what about the streets that are behind these? Well, the principle is exactly the same because there is just one vanishing point. So let's imagine that there's a building here. So this is in the street below, street behind. It's still going to match up with the same vanishing point. Now, if you do street photography, let's just put that one down there. Have a look at your photographs and work out the perspectives, draw lines over them, print them out and then just draw lines and you'll see how it works. So this building now is behind that one. Just do that. I'm just gonna put some shadows on here just so that you can see it a little bit more clearly. And then we'll just do our next experiment in one point perspective sometimes when we put the shadows in it's it is easier to see so we might put that one in there and we, this one could be you can just play with your colors and create some, some kind of fantasy town obviously I haven't put any doors in so let's imagine then that these buildings are huge. How are we going to show that they are massive? Well, we're going to do that by putting in tiny little doors. And then straight away, we know that these are huge buildings. So we're going to put in our tiny little door, each door coming down the street needs to line up with the vanishing point like that one and you work your way down and the same with the windows so let's imagine we have a window here let's put in our, our vertical now we put in the orthogonals let's put in a line there this is a very oh very sharp line here that line has got to match up that way so that's quite quite an extreme window let's imagine that this window goes all the way down here it's going to put in a faint line down there but each bit has to match up let's do one here let's do one here so this is a massive window or it could be like a poster on the side of the building. Like that. And then we'll, we'll do one at the bottom as well. Just so that you can see how each of them has to match up. like that so I mean it looks a bit strange because it is so extreme and this is what makes it so exciting so now we are going to do one with an extreme view of the other direction so I'm going to put in my vanishing point my vanishing no not my vanishing point my horizon line is going to be very high my vanishing point is going to be there And I'm going to put in some verticals. So I just want to see what this is going to look like. Put in a vertical like that. Join up the orthogonals. Just 
do that and there. Put in some vertical lines here. This street going this way. Take out that. Like that. Let's come down this way. Some verticals in. Join that one up. You're getting the idea now, aren't you? Let's have this one as a facing us building. It's going to go off the page. That's okay. And going to go right off, off the edge of the paint. Now we're going to have this one as if this building is sticking out. So we haven't done one like that. Here we go. Just joining up that there. So this building is staggered. Because obviously in a street scene you're going to have all sorts of uh, shapes and sizes aren't you let's take that one that way join that one there so this is like a row of terraced houses i'm not doing roofs roof roofs um a little bit more complicated and i just want you to get the basics um first but you could have a have a look have a play with some of these lines, create some street scenes, put some windows in, put some doors, some posters, things like that, and just have a play with it and see what happens. So let me know how you get on in the comments. And if you want to join the Facebook group, then please do, because it's so friendly and really supportive. I'm going to do a little bit more on this. I'm going to take out that. And then I'm going to come back. So you can see I've just added a few more little details. So imagine that this is a recess. Um, there's a the door here and we're, go we're going in in this way. And then I've put in some paving slabs and the curb. But everything lines up on the road to the vanishing point. And it, this is this is the key. So everything looking down the street goes to the vanishing point. Anything looking across is parallel to the edges of the paper. And in the next exercise and final exercise, we're going to go a little bit abstract, but using exactly the same principles. So for this final one, I'm going to go back into my sketchbook and we're going to do exactly the same thing. I'm going to put in the horizon, just sort of there. Can't really see that very much, right? Vanishing point. And I'm going to just draw some freehand shapes because I just want you to see what happens when we go a little bit abstract. I'm keeping these shapes um, as rectangles going to join up on the orthogonals but very lightly and then I'm going to go over with um, a pen so you can see these so it just all be a little bit crazy and for doodle club I'm going to do letters so doodle club on monday um will be 3d letters using one point perspective <laughs> it will be fun let's take that 
uh, and that one there. So just joined up the orthogonals. Just going to use thicker pencil. Can I see that one? It's a bit faint, that one, but that's okay. Right, let's, let me see what I'm doing over there. So again, I'm doing these freehand, so I wanted them to be a little bit wiggly, a little bit crazy. Like that, that one there. Let's do this one here. This one is kind of flying up in the air. Some, I don't know, crazy <laughs> flying object. This one is going to go this way. That's... So this one's sort of flying up in the air as well. And you can. There we go. Break the rules of physics as we have these these crazy ones. They're very similar to the one we did right at the very beginning with our cubes. But what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to cut some holes through these. So I'm going to imagine there is a hole that's been cut through there. So where are the orthogonals? It's this one here. So that's got to be joined up that way. and there with that joined up and then that is going through let's do another hole here put it in a hole this way the orthogonal is going to be here this one will be a bit narrower I think and we've got a hole going that way and then we've got this this uh, this strange object. Where's the orthogonal? It's going to be here. Drawing that there. Down there, which means that that's going to be that way. And that one is going to be there. Oh, I think I'm getting a bit carried away now. I think I need to do, do another hole up here. There, you're getting the idea now, aren't you? And we're going to have two on this side. Like there. And there. Like that. So that line is going through there. And then finally, we'll do one here. So this one. Picking up on that. That line needs to pick up there, so we're probably not going to see much of it actually. It's going to be a bit like that. That's that, that's yay! Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. So think about how we could do some shading. Let's just get some bit of shadow going on on these inside pieces. Let's try that there. But you get the idea. And you can start to make up your own rules. <laughs> and, see, and see what happens. So, I hope you have enjoyed this part one. And uh, I hope you'll join me next time for part two. For this little mini-series on perspective drawing. I really hope you enjoyed that tutorial and that you'll be back for part two. If you haven't liked or subscribed and this is something that you think that you would like to do, then that would be wonderful. And if you'd like to join our very friendly Facebook group, you could do that as well. The links are all in the description. Thank you so much and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.